What is up, what is up, what is up YouTube? It is your boy Diamonds here at Common Sense Graphics and today in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to make these cool paper style D's or letters or characters or anything you guys ever want to make. And it's real simple and real easy but let's get into it. The very first thing you want to do is you want to make a border of some sort. So first make a big square and then you want to center it and then after that you want to begin drawing the little squiggles in the lines and stuff inside of the square and we'll get to the reason why after that so it doesn't matter what you can draw you can have some fun you can make it very creative just have fun with your drawing and then after that what you want to do is you want to highlight everything that you just done the square and all the squiggles all together and then you're going to want to hit object and then you're going to want to hit expand appearance and then do it again depending if you if you used uh, a brush tool or if you used a pen tool item and just do that once more time hit object and expand and then everything should be conjoined or as one and then just merge it all together just to make sure it's all one item and then after that I'm gonna need you to draw a another square over it but this time with a color fill and this is where you become a little creative where you can choose your own color whatever color you want to do I'm gonna go blue my palette I'm gonna keep all the colors in a harmonious way in this blue color palette but then next thing we got to do is move the square the blue square behind everything and then we're gonna select everything we're gonna merge it and then we're gonna right click onto the blue and we're going to isolate the group and then after that off the blue click back onto the blue delete the blue and this is where the borders now have come to play as you can see it got rid of a lot of the blue and left only what was in the borders and that's why i say it's important that you make these borders and then something i do personally is i delete the black lines just because it's quicker for me to work this way when making the 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 overlapping style format that I have here and then after that just start selecting your colors that's all harmonized with the color that you have chosen so I'm gonna go through and have a bunch of different shades of blue just to give it that really cool look Now that you have all your colors situated with, it is time to get rid of that white spacing and to add your shadow effect. This is the time you can also decide which layer is higher than other layers, which ones are more arranged in the front than the rear. But when you're changing the, the dimensions to make the whiteness go away, the white spacings in between the images, all you gotta do is just follow the simple instruction right here that I'm doing in the video, and it will get rid of it seamlessly. And then you can start adding your shadows after you get done placing each layer the way you want it to be and me I put the very middle one on the top and then from there on it just spreads out from top to low kind of like geographic type style of thing um, with mountains and stuff if you've looked at a map before you can see the depth or the height of a mountain and then where the valley is at based on the style of layering and this is kind of the same way if you will and then we can start doing the shadows and the shadows is very simple pretty much you just click into effect stylize and then you do drop shadow and then you just tweak it to make it work personally I like mine to be with opacity 60 and then pixel up to 12 to 15 and then I just adjust it a little bit just to my liking just to get it to the proper location I want it to be with the X on my axis and just have some fun with it and you can do a lot of things with this depending on how intricate you want your design to be if you're using uh, weird little squiggles like mine or if you're using like actual shapes like triangles and lines and actual stuff like that you can do a lot of stuff just to make this really pop out but just have fun with it After you get your shading all done, it is time to make your character. Personally, the easiest way for me to do this was I just typed in a character and then I lowered the opacity and then I just drew over the character in a style and fashion. And mine's going to be kind of like a torn drip style. And it's going to look really cool at the end of the video, but pretty much that's what I recommend is just you just pick a type of font you like and then you type it in, you skewer it, whatever you want to do with it, and then you just start drawing over it just to give it its own cool look. And that's what it did to me, you know, D for diamonds, you know, you know who it be. And, um, <laughs> just gotta have some fun with it uh, this took me a few tries I just edited the, those those errors out and I just made it real quickly and I just had a lot of fun with it you know make sure you get, clean up the lines make sure it looks nice and neat and things like that when it comes to the actual design before you start doing the finalizations and it just comes out looking really good now in the next few processes we have to go through it's kind of rinse and repeat with the merging and the highlighting and the, the um, 
the isolating the appearances pretty much it's kind of rinse and repeat so pretty much you want to make sure everything's all selected on your screen merge it all together then you want to put a box over it like i just did here and then you're going to put the box in the back change the color so it doesn't blend in with the thing like i said before put it behind it and then you're going to want to isolate the groups merge it all together because in this tutorial you want to make sure that the initial text is colored black so we can do an outlining style of trick just to make it work better when you put it over that other image i have in the background which is really simple really easy and it just happens to make your workflow go so much more faster when you make it something like this but it's very simple like i said make make the lettering actually black and for the centerpiece that little d in the middle what i did is i pretty much just deleted it because i didn't think i needed it and it actually worked out for me a little bit of trial and error here um and it just worked out and pretty much you want to do the same thing you put another big old square right behind the d you have it in um you have it in this in, in the same layer as the d and you put another big square just over it and um you hit this uh, outline button in the pathfinder window you hit outline and then what happens is it'll get rid of all the black and leave a blank space there so it's really easy just to do this on a, on a quick fly um, design like let's say you want to make this really quickly or maybe you're doing a whole alphabet for maybe your typography class you have to make your own letterings so and you can do this real quickly real easily as you see there as I just hit the outline button and now all I'm left is right here is the outline of the D which is really cool and that's why it's important to make it black and then after that pretty much you can finalize it by now clicking on the blue square and then adding a stylized drop shadow to it and then just tweaking it now what I did personally for my own self is I actually double down the drop shadow on the actual D just to give it more emphasis to show that it is prevalent and then I did a little bit of outlining around it with the Gaussian blur just to show that it's like protruding out of where it's at and you can see here I'm doing a double outline on the double drop shadow on the image and it just really makes it pop out and if you have like multiple sections stuff like I did here in the center of the D then it is okay to um, you know to quick selection it at by itself and then add a drop shadow to it by itself and as you see I doubled it right there made it nice and dark and it just looks way better than if it was a little bit lighter in my own opinion and then I just start adding these emphasis around the actual image and then like I said earlier is I add a drop shadow to that not drop shadow a Gaussian blur to it and then I just lower the opacity I adjust them I move them around to where my liking and that's pretty much it you can make anything this way you can make anything not just letters you can make whatever shape you want to do if you want to draw something out that's really cool you want to have this in the background you can make a lot of cool things you can make really cool looking water uh let's say you want to draw an island you can make a lot of things but that's pretty much my video and if you guys made it this far if you guys found this video helpful please rate comment subscribe it helps me out a lot and i want to continue pushing out daily work for you guys let me know what's about your boy diamonds out